outside. There's still an awful lot of work to occur on the inside from putting down floor tile, um, finishing up painting walls and, and obviously other fixtures and fittings. Uh, but the school's coming along nicely. It's starting to look and feel like a high school uh, when we've been able to visit. Uh, there's a little bit of site work obviously still to be done over by the stadium also. Um, from a hiring perspective, we, we've hired somewhere in the region of 65 uh, faculty and staff. We're just over halfway through, uh, but that's keeping us busy at the minute. And then as we move towards uh, the spring, we're going to bring that team of faculty and staff together and start planning for the school year, but also try to engage members of our community, parents who wish to be involved in booster organizations, and uh, the Principal's Advisory Council, the, the, the Planning Council, um, and then help us with decisions that we still have to make with regards to uh, designing artwork for the building um, and, and then getting clubs and activities up and running for students to name, but, but many other uh, things that we still need to get in place for, for our first year of operation. So we're excited. Uh, we're excited to see our first students. Hopefully it's face-to-face -face in some capacity next year. Um, right now, we're scheduling students as if we're going to be in, in school face to face. We don't have any clearer guidance or picture as to what the school year is going to look like for next year. So we're planning right now as if it were a regular school year and then we'll respond on the back of that. So from a course work selection perspective, um, we're choosing courses as if we're face to face under a normal school year. Um, as far as what the school year will look like, as I said, we're not sure. Um, there's a lot of decisions to be made um at the superintendent school board level and even above uh, before i have any clearer picture about that as we move later into the presentation tonight i'll talk about a couple of the logistical items we've had questions about uh, but for now i'll hand you back over to mr pomfret to to talk more about the course selection process all right thank you Okay, so a, a very important resource for you all to be utilizing um, with your student as you're planning for course selection is the Gainesville High School Counseling Canvas page. Um, in their canvas is called GHS Counseling. Um, and this counseling page has a lot of information, including our course request forms. Um, I will post resources, including videos from teachers that are talking about their courses. Um, I have when they go to the home page, you'll see that I've circled this rising 11th grade button, and this is where they'll click to see information specific to rising 11th grade. Um, so kind of our upcoming events right now. So from February and March, I am going to be working with our feeder schools to do academic advising, and it is through Zoom. Um, so I would strongly encourage you for Patriot students, if, you're, if your student is currently at Patriot, I'm working with Patriot through the English classes um, to see students that way. If you are uh, your students at Unity Read, I have actually, I think I've seen all the rising 11th graders. I may have just a couple that I still need to see. And at Battlefield, I'll be scheduling appointments, typically on the asynchronous days for students to schedule with me. So please have your child watch their Prince William County email. I do my best to give as much notice as possible, but sometimes, um, you know, if I have a couple of hours available, I, I try to get students in during that time. So please have your student checking their Prince William County email. June 4th is the last day that we will be able to accept course request changes, and I'll talk about that process in just a little bit. Sometime in August, we are hoping to have a new student orientation, but obviously there's a lot of logistics and health concerns um, and things that we need to find more information about before we can get more clear on that. But as soon as we can invite you all into the building, we will. And the first day of school right now is scheduled for August 23rd, and we are very excited to see everybody. So Gainesville High School um, does have the Pathways to Global Citizenship Program. This is essentially a specialty program for all students. Rising 11th graders, however, are not required to, to choose a pathway. And this is because students in a pathway typically need to complete four to six courses within the pathway. And I'd like for you to think about the pathway as like a menu of classes connected um, via interest or, or some th theme typically like criminal justice or engineering, um, fine and performing arts, writing and communication. There's many pathways, but, but rising 11th graders are not required to pick a pathway. 
if they want to, they are more than welcome to. And as they are working with myself or other school counselors who are supporting Gainesville's academic advising, um, they are absolutely allowed to choose a pathway as long as there's enough time and room in their schedule to complete it. So there are five houses with multiple pathways in each house. And as I mentioned, it's typically tied to their elective choice. It enables students to create connection and a depth of study in something that they're interested in. So again, that could be art, that could be engineering. Um, there's about 12 pathways for students to pursue. Some of these pathways are connected to students' career and college um, intentions, but not necessarily. The, the point of the pathways is, isn't about having students pick their career in high school, but it's really about allowing them to explore their interests. Um, and for those students who choose, those rising juniors who choose to pursue a pathway, they will have the option of um, completing an extended learning experience, like a capstone assessment, and that can look many different ways. But again, for our rising 11th graders, I want to be very clear, they are not required to complete a pathway. For our rising 11th graders, we really want to be focusing on graduation and getting them in the challenging courses appropriate to them to get them ready for the next step. These are the five houses, the ones that are underlined, um, like languages and culture, engineering, math and automation, science, health and medicine, political science and criminology, and independent, independent study and scholarship and they have their corresponding pathways listed underneath them. If your student is interested, and again, I, I wanna be very clear, rising 11th graders are not required to do a pathway, but they can choose to do so if they want. There's a lot more detailed information um, on the pathways, including which courses that are kind of in the menu of each pathway. Um, detailed on our website, there is a section entitled Pathways to Global Citizenship. And you click on that and there's a section that says program, I believe it says um, detailed pathways or pathways detailed. And there's more information specific to the classes. But again, our rising 11th graders are not required to pursue a pathway. Um, again, as your students are about midway, focusing on graduation requirements is very important. It's been important all along, but as we're kind of on the tail end here, um, students in the state of Virginia can choose to pursue the advanced or the standard diploma. One is not better than the other. They're just a little bit different. So the advanced diploma does require more credits, and that includes more social studies, math, and science, and requires world language, whether three years of one or two years of two. The standard diploma has less of those core subjects and doesn't require a world language, though it can be used to uh, meet graduation requirements. Um, both diploma types require students to earn five verified credits. And verified credit is just a fancy way to say SOL. It means they pass the class and the SOL. Um, and then there's a few other graduation requirements, including first aid, CPR, AED, um, a virtual course requirement, which typically is completed in the student's economics and personal finance class. And then there's um, a career and technical education credentialing exam that can be used. It's required for the standard and can be used for the advanced diploma. I am going to, and I've actually posted already this presentation on the counseling canvas page under the rising 11th grade academic advising information. So please don't feel like you gotta, you know, get all this information down immediately. I've already posted this presentation on the canvas page and I'll get it on the webpage tonight so you can access it at any point. <clears throat> so for students, when they meet for academic advising, they will choose seven classes um, and two alternative electives. And this is just a sample schedule. Our students will typically take an English, whether that's English 11 or AP Lang, um, which is the equivalent for that requirement. For social studies, typically our 11th graders take US Virginia history or AP US history. Science truly depends on the placement and, and the classes they took in the ninth and the 10th grade. And we do have our course request form is posted on the Canvas page as well as the Gainesville under school counseling. I posted it on there. So if you want to see the full list of offered courses, those course request forms are available to you in those two places. Again, the Canvas page and then the web page. Um, students will take math, and again, that depends on their placement in ninth and 10th grade. 
Um, our 11th graders is typically when they take economics and personal finance, or they can take AP, um, AP economics can meet that requirement as well. And then they can have two electives that typically it can be a world language if they still need to complete their third year, or it can be something different. Um, and just as, a, as something you may or may not know for next school year, um, the county is no longer using the term pre-AP. This is not unique to Gainesville, this is across the county. They're going to be using the term advanced. So if you don't see pre-AP anymore, it's not because Gainesville is not doing pre-AP, it's because the county is no longer using the term advanced. And um, like I just mentioned, not using pre-AP anymore. For your students in advanced classes, it does offer a chance for challenge. Um, I encourage you to focus on student interest. So if your kid does not like math, um, for example, or doesn't like um, science or, or, or any of the core areas, it's, I wouldn't recommend having them take advanced courses in that section. And, and the reason that I say that is it is, a, it is a big time commitment, it is a big effort. And while I want your children and I encourage you to have your children take challenging courses, we don't want them to burn out in areas and then they might not do well across the board. Really focusing on your child's interest is a great way to kind of determine what would be a good fit for advanced courses. Um, in advanced courses, they can earn weighted grades as long as they earn a C or above. And there is a full list of our weighted courses in the Prince William course catalog. Um, you can Google that or I have it posted in the Canvas and as well on the, the Gainesville High School webpage too. Any advanced class, it allows for more independent work and increased rigor. Please consider time commitments if your child plays multiple sports or does lots of activities, or if you have family commitments. You, know, you only have so many hours in the day. Um, there truly is not a magic recipe for college admissions. So it's not like you take six AP courses and you're definitely gonna get into this school. That, that's not what colleges are telling us they're looking for. They're, they're wanting to see that kids are taking some challenging courses that are appropriate to them and that they're performing well in those classes. Um, there are teacher recommendations that you can see in parent view and student view um, for your current high schooler from the school that they're currently at. And teacher recommendations are very important and a, a very important data piece when you're determining what would be a good fit for your child in terms of their courses. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as a parent, you do have the, the ability to make the choice for your child, but having those conversations with your students, teachers, and following and looking at their recommendations and considering their recommendations is very, very important. We will, um, as we're meeting with students, look for alternative electives. We'd like to have two backups just in case. Student interest determines the courses that will run. So even though we're offering a lot of courses, there may be some at the end of the day where we just don't have enough numbers to determine which ones will run. Um, so that's where those backups can, can become very important. So please, when you're, when you're kind of practicing or going over the courses that your child will take next year, please make sure that their alternatives are classes that they will be satisfied with. Because um, again, we may end up having to use them if certain courses are closed or are canceled. Okay, and I'm going to pause now um, for Mr. Treadwell, let him introduce himself. Good evening, my name is John Treadwell and I will be the Special Education Department Chair at Gainesville High School. Um, just wanted to hit a few important points about the Special Education Department um, at Gainesville. We're going to strive to build a, a welcoming environment for all students. Um, I've already been contacted by some future students and some of our staff, um, some ideas about you know, ways to have students work together. Um, so that's going to be a very important focus. Um, I have been in contact with all of the, of the high schools that um, students will be transitioning from. And I plan to attend IEP uh, transition meetings to make sure that you have an opportunity to speak with me and I have the opportunity to tell you about the services that, that are offered at, at Gainesville. Um, one of our goals also will be to make sure that um, your child's case manager will contact you uh, before the first day of school so you um, have someone that you can ask specific questions to as we get, uh, get ready to open. Um, at all times, from now until we open school, 
have any questions specific to your child, feel free to email me. Um, my email is listed at the bottom of the slide and I look forward to speaking with you and getting to know you and your children. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Treadwell. I'd like to now introduce Ms. Kirkendall. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Ms. Kirkendall and I'm the EL Program Department Chair for Gainesville High School. And um, I just wanted to share a couple pieces of information quickly with you. Uh, we are already working with the ESOL case managers as well as the counseling staff at all of our feeder high schools and the middle schools to ensure that the English learners will be getting the correct services and supports in their classes. Um, and Ms. Pomfret and I will be working together to refine that. And also we will be reaching out, our, our ESOL case managers will be reaching out to families prior to the start of school to make sure we have some great paths of communication. So you can expect to hear from us. And then um, my email address is also here at the bottom of the slide and I'm able to communicate with you in English or Spanish. Thanks again for coming and looking forward to working with you. Thank you. All right, so the actual academic advising process. Um, what I have here are a couple of screenshots that may be of interest to you. This is what the card looks like for our So when your child looks on their dashboard, if they say, oh, I don't, I don't know that I've, I've received it, you can, the invitation for the Canvas page, this is what it looks like. If for some reason your child didn't receive an invitation, please feel free to email me. Um, and I'd be happy to add, add them to the page. It takes me just a moment. There is on the page, um, as I showed in the very front, there's that rising 11th grade academic advising information. And once you click on that, this is what you see. So there is a section here called, how can I prepare before meeting with the Gainesville High School counselor? And when you click on that red bar, it will expand and give you the course request form. It talks about the, the course catalog is in there. We have some videos from some of our teachers um, talking about courses that we're offering next year, introducing yourself to, or introducing themselves, uh, excuse me, the staff introducing themselves, as well as information on um, graduation requirements. This talks about the Zoom meetings. I'd really appreciate if you could have your child, you guys have already talked about the course request and what they'd like. Um, if they could have the forms filled out just for their reference, I will be actually inputting things on my end in our system. And then after their session, this section here talks about that you will be able to see their course request in student view and parent view under course requests once I update them. I do request, you know, if, if I see your child on a Thursday, it may take me a couple of days to get things inputted. So just give me a few days. If things don't look like exactly you thought, give me a little bit of grace of a couple of days to get everything inputted. Um, and also in this section, it has the link. If your child wants to make changes before June 4th, there's a Google form where they will input their changes and um, it's all in there. You guys can take a look at that. So the Canvas page, as I'm hoping you're seeing, is a, a wealth of information. There's a, a lot of resources in there. So please refer to the Canvas page. As I mentioned, it's very helpful for students to review the course offerings prior to our academic advising session. And the course request form is located in this section on the rising 11th grade academic advising information. Our meetings will be through Zoom. And I would love it if you could tell your kid to turn on their camera. It's, it's not awesome having to do academic advising to a, a black screen. So if, they could, if they're comfortable turning on and letting me see their face, it does, it does make a big difference. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, towards, until now, until the end of February, I'll be meeting with rising 11th graders through their English classes. Um, meeting, I, again, I'm pretty sure I've seen most of the Unity Read 11th graders. I think I have just a couple that I'm still trying to see. And in March, I'm really going to be diving into Battlefield and working with students. It's very important that they're checking their Prince William County email addresses. I'm hoping to start getting the invitations out the last week in February so students can start to plan. But um, checking their Prince William County email is very, very important. All right. 
All right, so parent and student view. I've talked about that a couple of times, and there's a few resources that probably um, would interest you if you haven't seen them before. You are able to see in parent and student view, and these are uh, screenshots of my own child's um, account in parent view. Um, I, you can see there is a section that says course history and it lists all of their graduation requirements and it even has a blue button that says unofficial transcript so you'll be able to click that and view your child's unofficial transcript. Um, and then you can also see what percentage they're complete with their courses, you know my, my kiddo is starting ninth grade next year so he hasn't finished anything yet but you know he will be, but you as a rising junior um, your child will have their ninth ninth grade courses completed in here. Under the course request button, this is where you'll be able to see once I input your students choices, um, you'll be able to see the classes that they've chosen. Right now, you can also see teacher recommendations. So once, you know, again, a few days after I meet with your child, um, please confirm the choices. And then you have until June 4th to make changes. And again, that change form is in the counseling canvas page. Um, I've said this a few times from February to March, I'll be meeting with students. I hope to be done before spring break. Um, please be patient with me. I promise I will see your child as soon as I can. I do have support from a lot of our feeder schools to get academic advising done. They've been very gracious, but it does take a long time during Zoom. So I do appreciate your patience. Um, and June 4th, that's that magic day. I want you to circle on your calendar. That's the last day that we'll be taking course request changes. Um, as a kind of a little bonus here beyond academic advising, I, just a few things that as rising junior families, what you guys can be considering is you're planning for life after high school, since you're almost at that halfway point. Um, Naviance is the college and career online resource tool that is available to students for free for, through Prince William County. And you will be act, able to access this, or your child will be able to access this on their current school's counseling page. And Gainesville High School will also have an Aviance account. We're not set up yet, um, but we will be. Your child has an Aviance account right now through their school. So there's a couple of things that might be of interest. Um, for career research, um, there is the Do What You Are, which is a Myers-Briggs um, personality type profile that they can try. There's Road Trip Nation where they answer a handful of questions of things they're interested in and it takes them on videos with people in professions um, and kind of walks them through their career, the kinds of education they had to have. Maybe your child has no idea um, what kinds of careers would be of interest to them, which is, is terribly normal um, for a 10th grader, rising 11th grader not to know. There is the Strengths Explorer and the career interest profiler. And, and I find um, a lot of time kids just don't know the, the words to describe what they're good at. And using some of these profilers and the personality type assessments and um, these other profilers will enable your child just to begin to develop a language about themselves. If your child is considering college, there are great resources in Naviance, including Supermatch, um, which allows students to pick lots of different criteria and then it will create a list of schools and you can save lists and then revisit them. It has information on admissions um, as well as college match, which matches specifically to your child and the schools that they're interested in. And then my most favorite is the scattergrams. This is on every college's page. There is a scattergram, which shows for your child's current school um, it plots using the SAT and GPA of students that have applied to certain schools um, if they were accepted or not. So there's like green check marks if they've been accepted and then there's red dots if they've not. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get a visual as your child is assessing if a school is a good fit or not for them in terms of level of risk. Because we'd like your child, if they are considering college, to consider is this a high a medium or a low risk school for me as I'm considering my options. <clears throat> Naviance is also a great resource for scholarships. Um, and you can start looking now. I would encourage your family to start having conversations about um, how, how you'll pay for school. It, it's, a, it's a big endeavor. So having those conversations can be really important and using Naviance in the scholarship page as a jumping off point can be really helpful. There is a workbook called Opportunities, which I've actually posted on the Canvas page on the rising 11th grade academic information. 
Um, and this workbook is really one of my most favorite resources for students who are considering going to college, whether it's a two or four year. Um, it's a phenomenal resource. And there I posted the link to the PDF um, in the Canvas page. It does have a junior and a senior year checklist. Um, it has a lot of information about financial aid. And again, having those, those conversations about how to pay for school, whether it's starting at NOVA and doing the guaranteed admissions program, which where a student will do two years at NOVA, take certain classes and earn a certain GPA, then they are guaranteed admissions into any state university in Virginia. And so it's a great program and a great way to save a lot of money. Um, also, if your child is not college bound, I would consider or recommend considering NOVA in their career certifications program. They have a very robust career certification program. And depending on what your child wants to do, a four-year degree might not make sense. It might be a career certification, which would be a better fit for their career choices. Um, and please also remember that extracurriculars don't necessarily, as much as we want them involved in clubs and sports, it can also be other kinds of community involvement, including work, or volunteering. Um, we do want to see your child's face at Gainesville High School and encourage them to get involved in lots of things. But you know, things like work also count as extracurriculars. Curriculars. So again, please check out that opportunities book. I cannot say enough good things about it. And I am going to hand it over now to Mr. Eldridge. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Eldridge. I'm the director of student activities. Thank you all for joining us this evening and happy snow day. In your chat feature, I have put reference information guides for you, my email address, and a link on our home webpage through PWCS that can provide you information about our athletics and activities. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, if you go to our homepage and the About Us menu option at the top of the screen, we'll produce a drop down menu. You'll see student activities and athletics. A uh, couple, couple things to note. Um, my mission is to get every child involved at Gainesville High School in something that they're passionate or grow to be passionate about outside of the curriculum classroom environment. And we will have, from an athletic standpoint, a full program load of VHSL recognized programs that start at the varsity level, level with one exception. Football will start JV and freshman only in the fall coming 2021-2022 year. The fall of 2022 will then start football's first varsity competition, competition year. But again, we'll be holding every program that's available in the current high schools that you uh, or your children attend uh, at this point. From a club and activity standpoint, uh, we do want to get a few clubs off the ground initially to include student leadership, robotics, um, and multicultural um, organizations that sort of reflect the diversity of our student population. Um, I think those are the big ones that, that I'd really like to get off the ground initially. But other clubs and organizations that kids are passionate about and have adult supervision uh, to help them with those things, I, I am all for getting off the ground. So it's really the initiative of the students that'll drive that program load. From a fine arts perspective, we also will have a full uh, theater, orchestra, band, um, chorus, all those uh, types of things that are offered in secondary schools across the county. We have hired a few staff to include a band director. Those uh, individuals can be found on that website link I put in the chat for you. Um, and from an organizational standpoint, we are looking for kids to be involved as well as parents in helping us get things off the ground to include an activity booster club. And I'll be seeking some student input also for, we'll call them school embellishments, uh, wall murals, things of that nature in our facilities. Um, so please reach out, email me. Uh, I would love to get parents in particular. I would love to get you all involved. Uh, as we start some things up in late April, early May. From a facility standpoint, what you're looking at on your slide right now is the centerpiece to our weight slash training center, weight room slash training center. Um, it will be customized to the Gainesville color scheme. We are scarlet, red, gray, black, and white. And as you know, we're the Cardinals. Um, the training center we've developed is really for every student and faculty member. It's not just an athletic program development 
room. It will be for everyone who wishes to lead um, a healthier lifestyle, regardless of their involvement um, with athletics at the school. However, we also have put the facilities like the weight room and the training center on at, at a place where it will be very beneficial for the curriculum of the physical education department to be used as well as our athletic uh, teams. From an outside standpoint, we've got a large turf practice facility. It's the largest one I've ever seen. It's got a full football soccer field as well as a full softball and baseball turf infield and extra space in addition to that. Uh, we also have a full turf field stadium. Um, and then we have isolated grass fields to include full Bermuda grass and softball and baseball stadium and an area for our throwing pits for track as well as physical education right off the school building side. Um, really excited to get, get started with this. Um, and we, like I said, I've, I've already gotten to meet some kids. We've, we've gotten some uniforms out there already uh, to go for most of the programs. And um, we're just getting ready for June to get everybody uh, going. So if anybody has any questions or would like to jump in and help, help me with some initiatives, please, I welcome all, all comers. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody, particularly juniors. They'll be the leaders of the school. So please use the information in the chat. And thank you again for showing up today. Um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Beach just to wrap up a kind of a few final points about school, the school year next year. Thank you again. Um, as we plan for next year, we're, we're tracking as if it's going to be a normal school year and then we'll respond accordingly. Um, if things change or as things change regarding face to face or hybrid instruction, etc. Um, one thing that is for sure is we'll be obviously concerned for the safety and well-being of all of our staff and, and students. We realize that the last 12 months have taken their toll on many of us. Um, so we're going to start the school year um, really talking about taking care of our students and ourselves before we um, take care of the curriculum, if, if, if that makes any sense. We're going to have high expectations for um, all of our, our students with regards to learning, but we have to make sure we're, we're in good shape first. Um, my vision for the school is to create a positive and supportive environment, inclusive environment. Um, Gainesville High School is situated uniquely right in the middle of, of Gainesville. And many of our students have the, the chance to walk to school or drive to school within five to seven minutes. So we wanna make the most of that. And, and hopefully Gainesville very quickly will become part of the fabric of the community in a place where um, not just students, but their families are, are, are able to, to connect and, uh, and spend time. Um, one of the questions we have is, when can I see the school? When, when can I walk around the school? And the answer is, not yet. Um, there's a, a small number of us are able to tour the, the construction site, maybe about once a month, uh, just to monitor the, the construction progress, and, and that helps them with the procurement process. We don't anticipate getting the keys to the building until June. Once we are able to physically move in and start to receive the big, big loads of deliveries that we're anticipating for furniture, among other things, we'll start to engage the community. And, and as soon as we're able to get groups of students and their families through the building, uh, we will do. We want you to see the school. We want you to, to feel like it's, it's your school as quickly as possible. Um, we've talked about there, there are a lot of unknowns. As we know the answers, we'll try to communicate them. The three guarantees for communication are going to be our website, uh, the school Twitter feed, and then the, the school messenger um, email service. So they're going to be the three predominant ways in which we push information. Um, right now, obviously, we're also leveraging Canvas uh, to communicate with students from a, a scheduling perspective. Junior class um, is the year that many of our students get the opportunity to, to drive to school. Um, we just this week we're in the process of uh, selecting our school security officer and that's the the department within the school that handles a lot of the parking permits and uh, parking privileges so once we have that person selected and on board um, there'll be a little bit more information coming but probably early in the summer um, July we'll start to push out information about parking permits um, we'll physically start to sell those parking permits I'm guessing uh, around the beginning of August um, but we'll make sure we communicate that as we get closer to, to that being a need. 
Um, class rings was also a question that came up. And, and again, we're, we're working with vendors to select the right vendors to provide um, various services and, and resources to the community, yearbooks being one, um, class rings and, and other um, materials being another. I would imagine in the next week or two, we'll have selected a provider for class rings. We'll then get into the, the conversation of uh, the design of the class ring for Gainesville High School students. And um, I'm sure that before we hit July, there'll be an opportunity for students to, to purchase a class ring for delivery if they choose to do so. Okay, I'll hand it back over to Mrs. Pomfret just to, to wrap up. Thank you. So our last slide is really um, contact information for you all, and I will leave this up for a little bit, but please note that again, our main source of information is going to be the high school website through the Prince William County, um, through the normal Prince William County um, uh, webpage, we'll be through there. We're also on Twitter. We do have a Facebook page, um, but again, the web page is really going to be our main source of information. Um, from time to time, we'll post videos and we'll use, we'll use YouTube, YouTube for that, but that's also linked on our web page. And for me, for academic advising, the main source of information in terms of courses is going to be that Counseling Canvas page. If your child has not received a Counseling Canvas page invitation, um, in a moment, I'm going to put my email in the chat, so feel free to email me and I can have your child added to the Canvas page. So I'm actually, um, that's the end of our webinar, so I'm going to turn off in just a moment, but I will be helping to answer questions in the Q&A, so feel free, we'll stay up for a little bit um, to make sure we answer your questions, and we look forward to working with you and your child.